Hi. Hello. Hi. How y'all doing? Um, I'm going to give you a couple of slides. It's nothing in great detail, and then I'll tell you what it is exactly we're going to talk about. Let's see if it works. No. There we go. Sorry. 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 Uh, we're all Canadian, so you're going to hear a lot of A's, so I'm apologizing in advance for apologizing. Um, so when I came up with this talk, and I'm going to talk about what that is in just a minute, um, for one of the first people I talked to was uh, a dear friend, Nathan Ingram. So, uh, you know, he wasn't going to be here, of course, but I, I pinged him and I said, I need your help, I need to help frame this talk. So, uh, I wanted to at least give some, some credit where credit is due. Um, there we go. So, uh, this is our panel. Um, in, in alphabetical order, uh, there is, uh, and I'll give these guys each a chance to introduce themselves, uh, but I think I've got all the positions and Twitter handles and all that other stuff. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Something. Not something like that, exactly. Yeah. So, so I figured I'd give you guys this and you'll have a chance to sort of take a look at that. And then, you know, you'll have at least, you know, our, our photos so you know exactly who each one of us is. Um, <laughs> Hey, hey, I asked. Well, yeah, but anyway. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start. We'll, we'll go, we'll go down the we'll, we'll go down the row here, and then we'll get to exactly what the topic is. Um, so my name is Shanta. I'm the project liaison manager at Codable, um, where uh, which is a WordPress platform for uh, WordPress developers and finding your WordPress developer. Um, I've also got a background in uh, academia with some of these other people here, and we'll let them uh, give their own. Matt. I am Matt Graham, uh, senior software, or senior software, not software, web. I've done software with him. Senior web developer at Sandbox uh, Software Solutions, uh, based out of Guelph, but we have a uh, mostly remote team. Um, and I've been developing for 15 years? Something like that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Michael Jones. I'm a uh, professor and program coordinator of the Creative Industries Management Program at Sheridan College, uh, which is kind of a fusion of arts and business, essentially. Uh, but I have talked with uh, Sean here before uh, in a separate program, Communication, Culture, and Information Technology, and I've been doing this for 18 some odd years. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, I'm Kira. I am a, a freelance software developer, I guess, in, in one, one half of my life. And the other half, I have a piece of software called Dragon Teach. Um, I, like, I like to call myself Chief Geek because, you know, I, it's my business. I can call myself whatever I want. Um, so I'm also Chief Awesomeness. <laughs> but, yeah. Yep. Yes. Okay. And I've been freelancing kind of for. 10 years, 11 years, at least. Yeah. yeah. So, so what we've got here is a range of people, and, and I'll tell you how this talk came about. Is uh, when the pandemic hit, or just before the pandemic hit, I got laid off from my job as a quality assurance manager at a software company. February, I got laid off. March, we hit COVID. Nobody's hiring. So, what do I have to do? I have to come up with my own. So I did start my own business. And I thought, yeah, you know what? I can actually do this. And I got all riled up and I started my own business and I started going and I'm like, I'm getting caught up in this and, and that and the other thing. And then I found Codable. I became an expert on the platform. So I'm like, okay, well maybe I don't have to, you know, forage so much for, for business. And then I realized, you know what? I don't work well as a freelancer. That's that's me. And so I have this theory that um, not everyone is built to be a freelancer, as it were, or, or does well as a freelancer, and that's okay, which is part of this talk, and that was sort of my, my premise for this. And as I was developing the talk and I was having this conversation with my friend Nathan, I realized that if I gave this talk alone, it would be biased. Hence the panel you see before you, which is why I wrote to Trevor, and I'm like, Trevor, can I change it to a panel? Which is why we now have a panel. So some of these people have done their own freelancing, have gone back into business, and I'm going to let them sort of, you know, guide their own sort of conversations. So, um, 
So the first question I, I will pose to you all is, what do you think makes a good freelancer? Like what traits, like that was my sort of theory, is that there were certain traits that people needed to have or that that drives them. Yeah, Mike? Yeah. Um, I think it's maybe not a trait as much as a skill set. Uh, if you are uh, have a particular skill that's very much in demand and is difficult to replace, uh, then probably freelance is your best option simply because people are coming to you, you can set your price point and everything is going to work out well for you. If your skill set is pretty vague and undifferentiated from everything, then you're com in competition with a lot of other people and you're basically competing on price, which means, you know, screws go down on you. Uh, so, yeah, I would say it really depends beyond trades what your skill set is. Okay. Anyone else want to chime in? I think being a good multitasker, um, because if you're a freelancer, you are the business. So, you know, I was a, I was a freelance uh, you know, developer. I did both, you know, web applications and WordPress stuff. Um, but when looking back now, being in the position I'm in, I have a project manager that tells me what I need to do. <coughs> project coordinator over here. <laughs> I'm just waiting for her to heckle me. She hasn't yet. Um, I, so, so like I know the you know the scope of, of work, which I did as a freelancer because that was part of it. But the business stuff, billing, keeping up with communication, like all these, all the little things that, as someone who's an employee, like if you're currently an employee and you go into freelancing, you don't necessarily think about all these extra bits that you need to handle, and realistically should be billing for because it's still your time and it's up to you if you bill at the same rate as the core work or if you bill at a lower rate depending on you know where your skill set is. so yeah like having all that in mind when you go into freelancing is a is really important and the, the ability to keep track of all of it. yeah I do think that, that that's well you also have to kind of learn where you where you where you're missing your your yep. your stuff. So like like you you get into this and all of a sudden you yeah you gotta make some money. You gotta call somebody and be like, I need money from you or you need to you need to be able to do that. You need to be able to talk to talk to your clients and, and that and that sort of thing as well as being able to like pick up QuickBooks or find a solution to your to your billing needs. And and the same thing is you gotta keep yourself on track. There's nobody else there to uh, to um, to to be like you're 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 you gotta the, here are the three projects that are next. It's like you can it's real easy. Let me tell you, it is super easy to go off the rails to go go down a rabbit hole without uh, without kind of <laughs> without a little bit of detail. Sir, that was not coordinated. Not at all. <laughs> we didn't plan that, but it was damn good. Yeah, right. should I be? Kira, go down a rabbit hole? No. Oh, you yeah, go down no. rabbit holes all the mm. time. It's sort of like. You, yeah, you almost have to have the, the sort of wherewithal to make sure that your rabbit hole doesn't turn into a week of rabbit hole, as opposed to like you get a couple of hours to enjoy your enjoy that 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 exploration, and then you mm -hmm. you come back to what you have to do. But it's not necessarily billable rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Or make it a billable rabbit hole. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, 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 that's a skill right there. Like, you can make a billable rabbit hole. Uh, mm -hmm. Please tell me how that is. So so how that 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 waste my entire month for money. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, BillableRabbitHole.com. Here we go. We got some registrars in the room, don't we? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I, I guess where I, and, and I think you brought up a, a very good point, and this is sort of where I got hung up when I was starting my own business, is, okay, now I have to figure out what works for me. I have that choice. That's the beauty about this. I can go, I can choose whatever damn software that I want to use. I can choose what I want to do and what I don't want to do. If I don't want to do my own accounting, I hire somebody to do it or QuickBooks or whatever the heck it is. The possibilities are, the endless. Possibilities are endless. And therein lies the rub for somebody mm -hmm. like me. Because that's practically all I spent my time doing. I got caught up, personally, again, I, I don't I want to pass this over, but this is where I was sort of going with this idea of the talk, is I literally got caught up in 
well, how do I use this template, or how can I make this, do this other thing? And I spent a lot of time just choosing the tools that I was going to use for this. And when something didn't work quite rightly, or didn't work the way that I, you know, it's missing that one thing, or it didn't work that one right way, then I use something else, or I go to, and I spent weeks, months even, just coming up with those. That's like keeping yourself on track thing, right? Like which is, a, which is, well, that's part yeah, of the problem, is I kept it on the same track. To, to change change a piece of software, you right. got to learn the new software. You got to yeah. do this. It's, it's a it's a big deal. So it's like sure. stay sure. with the thing that you're you mostly know. Maybe it doesn't work as well, mm -hmm. and then you have to pick it pick your pick your moment, mm -hmm. pick your time and place to to yeah. jump pick jump to else. something else. Yeah. Well, and and this is the thing is I I even said for myself. I mean, I ended up working for Codable, and now I do this. Right. The scope of what I do now is like here. I don't have to worry about the accounting. I don't have to worry about the sales or any of that other stuff. And so for myself, and where I was coming with this talk was, is that I have ADHD. And inattentive type doesn't necessarily mean that you can't focus on anything. It's you focus on something far too long, right? So unless I have somebody else, an external person, to sort of go tap, 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 hey, by the way, this is what you need to do, or this is what you need to focus on, I'll do it. I have no problems doing that. But I need somebody to probably tell me what to focus on first. And I will then sort of go that way. So this is where I was sort of going with sort of the, the traits of, of somebody like myself. Like, I, I can't have a wide focus. Or I can't necessarily, I don't think anyways, the type of personality I am. So um, then what would you say would be the thing that would make you, like, not suitable for being a freelancer? Either characteristics or traits or whatever. It, it kind of it kind of ties into what you were just saying. Mm -hmm. Flexibility. Um, I guess pros I, and cons. As yeah, well. exactly. So fle so flexibility. Um, I basically like I started out in more of a design capacity. I was the coder of my class, but I it was a design focused uh, program. Basically, within the last four years, I've said, no, I'm not doing design anymore. Because I don't, in my design perspective, I don't have that flexibility. I, when I think of a design, I'm like, this is perfect. Here it is. This is the only thing you get. That's not how design works. I know that now. But <laughs> when I was at, at, in my freelance role and doing a little bit of design work, mostly not, but... You know, every once in a while I get that, and I'd be like, "Here you go." Oh, I don't like it. Okay. You know, and then I go back to the drawing board and I'd be all disgruntled, and, you know, bent out of shape. <laughs> so, all that to say, flexibility is very important uh, okay. in terms of being a freelancer because of the varied uh, work that you have to do, mm -hmm. just as your own business. Uh, for me, what would limit me, and I have done, for, uh, I was part of a web consultancy like in the early days of the internet, 1996 it was, uh, and uh, I was the coder for it actually because I, I was somehow taught myself how to do Perl scripts. Yay, perfect. Yes. Uh, <laughs> now why I do this to myself. Uh, but you, you could, like, that was a day that, you know, 50 bucks an hour for basic HTML and 125 for Perl, right? So I'm right. like, cool. Exactly. Uh, definitely doing this. Um, and it was good uh, because it was, the hardest part, though, was the um, wondering where your next gig is coming from. Predictability. And, yeah. Like, it is, I love having a predictable salary with a defined ben benefit pension. I don't have to worry about a damn thing when I'm 65, which is coming up in 15 years. So, I do have to worry about these things now. Uh, however, I'm also one of the side projects that I do do. Uh, I've been doing comedy classes and improv stuff, and I've now been working with a lot of uh, actors. And I see it in their life, where, you know, getting the next gig is really complicated. It's difficult if, if you have to pay your rent on that. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Uh, I'm, yes. 
Yeah, we'll have to leave that out. We'll bleep that. We'll bleep it out. Yeah, uh, she's got to sure edit this them, is on so. a seven second delay, right? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, so uh, I look at their life and I, I feel very, very sympathetic to them because, I mean, uh, there are people who are paying their bills on this and that can be really, really stressful. So again, I think that's where, the, and again, you're at that undifferentiated uh, stage. They're all people who are taking background acting and non-union commercials, things like that. Anybody can do that job. And so you're basically getting the lowest possible pay rate. Uh, and again, for every you know A-list Hollywood actor who could totally make and choose their own scripts and everything like that, and make millions of dollars, there's a thousand other people who are mm -hmm. in just, you know, indescribable and they're just you know, uh, mm -hmm. interchangeable. And that's not where you want to be. So uh, freelancing is much easier if you're in demand and uh, worthy of the big bucks. Uh, I think if you're struggling to decide even what you, your value proposition is, it might not be the best place for you because it's almost instant exploitation. Kira? Mm -hmm. um, so, well, I, I mean, I want to be like, yeah, the first thing is like, you got to enjoy it. If you, if you hate, uh, right, like doing a bill, or if you, I mean, I'm, I, I am not a big fan of writing proposals for stuff, uh, I, uh, but I have, I have, I have, I have long-term clients, so I pick, it takes me four months to get a client, but it, once I have them, them, I will, I will generally have them for years, right? So it's, it's, there's a, there is that, that, like, that, like, what am I, how am I going to pay my bill if that, if that client disappears, right? It's going to be four months, give or take, before I can get, I can, I can get a, a similar, like, long-term mm -hmm. um, client, and I generally have two or three at any given time, and that's my, um, and it is like, you have to be able to, if you do not like, if you do not like switching between those, the jobs, if you do not like talking to your, to your clients, if you just aren't good at that, that's not, maybe it's not the, the thing, or maybe you find, um, you find a, uh, a, a business partner to, to help you with that, right? Like, that's the, the other thing is, is that if you, you know, get, get somebody who can, I guess that's not, that's not really answering that, quite the question of, like, what, what would not make you, but it's like, there is there there are ways around it, and it's it's all about yeah it's flexibility and your ability to um, to be to be happy with that with that level of both flexibility and uncertainty that uh, mm -hmm. is built into that. Well, I think what Mike was saying as well about you know having that specialty and that value proposition and and you know being in demand like that you've said you only have two or three clients, mm -hmm. right? There are some people I know who are freelancing that have hundreds of clients, right? And I think that you've hit on something that I wanted to ask about is sort of, um, you know, is there a freelancer that does better with multiple clients just doing the same sort of thing? Or do you have like two or three clients and we've also been talking about whether or not, you know, you want to keep doing that thing for that long of a time. To well, switch it up, and and I, you know, Kira, I know you've sort of been talking about and that. And that's recently. the thing. That's sort of, like I had a client I, uh, last year. I, I I we went our separate ways just because I'd been working for them for three years, and that was I was bored at that point. Like it's it is it is, it was time to sort of be like I'm I'm done, and uh, they went off and got another developer, and I mm -hmm. went off and did other things, and it's um, um and I I quite enjoy like I, my my big. Uh, my my clients is they're they're big they're they're not just big but they're big in scope like it would give you a lot of flexibility in what like and and you know interest in what you're doing too right you can you potentially are one day you're doing SSO on a WordPress site and the other day you're you're building a sub JavaScript that uh, transfers a database from one place to another I mean it is it, if you like having that kind of that that level of difference in the it, it, you may just have, you may have a small number of customers. If you, if you are the expert in moving Drupal to WordPress, uh, maybe that's all you want to do. And like you've got a hundred customers that you just you run you just do the same thing over and over and over again, and and that's okay too. Like you can find 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 your uh, I mean, I think find you know, your bliss. The, right? the idea you being think? is you know do you want multiple or hundreds of clients or do you want like the select few that pay you a lot of money because you know what the heck you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Question is, is you know, are you going to get bored of doing the same thing over and over and over, hundreds of times, 
or you know have two or three clients where you're doing slightly different things or the same, right? Do you, do you want to change the gig up, right? Like you know you want to do this like a one shot for this client, and then there's another one shot for that client, or do you end up with things like recurring revenue, right? Where it's literally it's almost on autopilot every month. Right? So those, I think, are some of the other... Oh, yeah, that's the thing. Please. If you can, if you have 100 clients and you're doing basically the same thing, it gives you the opportunity to to uh, build your own software to automate do that thing. Yeah. Automate. Well, and we were talking, you know, one of the, one of the earlier talks were about, you know, how do I become a WordPress developer, right? Those are some of the things that you can think of to actually, you know, go, hey, you know what, I'm doing this every day and this and this. That can help up your skills. Figure mm -hmm. out a way to do it so you don't have to do it. You just let it run, right? Automate it or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Or, or in the, even in that vein, um, outsource certain parts of it. Mm. I mean, um, Nick uh, Adams was uh, doing a talk earlier yeah. today. He's CEO of WP Buffs. They do, like, their specialty is maintaining and updating WordPress sites. If you love building the site and say, I could care less about updating text or you know, adding a little bit more margin above a block, they'll do that. That's their that's their core business. Mm -hmm. And as uh, as as a referrer, you get the um, recurring revenue. Now it's only ten or fifteen or I don't know what the percentage is. Sorry, Nick, if I'm screwing that Sorry. up. Sorry. Sorry. Um, but you get a portion of that monthly mm -hmm. uh, cost. For mm -hmm. that, for the plan, so and maybe you're, you're, maybe you're a fabulous salesperson. You just exactly, get yeah. That. yeah. Um, it's not even about coding. It's just a matter of like, you know, making money off your sale. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Actually, that would be the thing that would keep me out of freelancing is that I'm not a good salesperson. I right. do it. I'm yep. not Same. a good salesperson <laughs> either. Like it's every, so it's good I to just, have three clients. Then. Well, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the thing is, I you know, I drop one and I get, I pick up another eventually. Um, and it just, it just, I just keep going like that, and um, and I just word of mouth, and I, you know, somebody comes and says, hey, I want to do X, Y, Z, and that's, mm -hmm. that's what we do. So would you say that there are? Let me ask you this: as a freelancer, are there routines that you go through either daily, weekly, monthly? And you say, as a freelancer, you must do these things. Like, you know, we talked about invoicing, for example. But is there something that you, like, I know, Kira, you do a lot of freelancing, and you have a certain, hey, this is my routine every day, every month, whatever. Like, do any of you guys have that sort of? My routine is no routine, really. Like, it's kind okay. of, it's, it, it is, Fine. it is, uh, well, I guess, from a time perspective, it's like, I'll work for an hour, and then, then I get up, and I, I usually go down and open the fridge, and, realize I'm not actually hungry and close the fridge and then I wander around my house a little bit and like five or ten minutes later I come up but come back and I sit down and I'll do that's that's how I change change sort of change gears yeah change gears that's how I like and so I might even go back onto the same thing but it's like there's I have these during the day those those routines of, mm -hmm. but it, from a from a, what I'm doing it's like okay. it's the thing that I happen to be you know, I want to do at that point. At that day, a, that uh, time. Very hard for me to be like on Monday from mm -hmm. nine to to ten. I'm gonna I'm gonna write some CSS. Mm -hmm. That that would never work for me. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's it, so my kind of it, it's it's similar to to Kira in that I didn't really have a set uh, routine every day, mm -hmm. but. There was a certain structure that just kind of came out in the wash. That I would sit down at the computer, I would check my emails, um, you know, respond to clients in the morning, um, and I would try and fit in some form of learning every day if I could, unless I was on a deadline and that just got skipped, which happened more often. Um, but yeah, learning something new about your niche, about your profession, is crucial. You need to be an eternal student. Mm -hmm. Because if you sit on what you know for too long, someone else is going to wipe the floor with you. Well, let's just think about like AI right now. Is that exactly. You? 
if you like, there, there's there's going to be two people in the future. It's going to be the people who are telling the AI what to do, or getting told what to do by the AI. Like yeah. it's, uh, and you want to be the ones telling, not the ones being told. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, so having some form of learning, and I mean, you know, again, coming back to the billing, because as a freelancer, you need to be billing, or else, you know, what are you doing? You're coding it for free? No. Um, so yeah, have that on a set interval, whether it's weekly, daily seems excessive if it's just you. No. Um, yeah. But, and then, you know, following up emails, following up with clients that, that haven't paid yet, yeah. that sort of thing. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I mean, it's not, again, for me, it was not a, it was not a set thing. Mm -hmm. It was not like, but it kind of came out to wash that I, every Friday I would do billing. I've had clients with it where the billing, they, they just, they, it takes them like two months, three months to uh, to get back and they, they do not last with me. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's like I choose, I choose my clients as much as they choose me to. So mm -hmm. it's sad. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the nice things was when I was freelancing, I had one client, again, one of those cash cow clients mm -hmm. who was a big corporation, which were made nameless, but they were excellent about having their, their bills paid on time oh, yeah. and to, to the, like to the day. <laughs> okay. Okay. The, the one thing, I, one of the things I remember or, um, that I realized, like I said, when I when I joined Codable as, as a staff person is, and I don't know if I'd actually made the connection before, was for myself, and I probably should have learned this before, anytime when I'm learning something, if I'm given like a self-paced learning, I, I don't end up doing it. Like I don't do it well. I have to be in a class, right? I have to be accountable. I have to be present, right? Like go, just going to the gym, mm -mm. give me a time where I have to be in class and I will be there, right? Whether it's a yoga class or whether it's a swimming class, karate class, doesn't matter. And I, I realize that about myself. So I think also being, you know, a certain type, we were talking about learning, right? So if I'm doing self-paced learning, I'm going to screw it up. If I have a class and I have to be there at a certain time, whether it's for learning or whether it's for exercise or whatever have you. And what I realized about that is that I need a routine. And not necessarily, and I have to be accountable to someone else. Otherwise, I won't do it. I know my way, my, myself that way. So for example, when I joined Codable, they said, okay, well, what kind of schedule do you want to do? And I'm like, I want to do nine to five. Like I could have said, I want to do like 10 to 6. And I'm like, I know what I'm going to I'm going to end up, no, that's a bad idea. So I went with 9 to 5. And, yep, every day. And as soon as 5 o'clock comes, I'm out. Okay? So for me, I found um, not just having a routine that you necessarily build yourself, because I can cheat. Mm -hmm. And nobody else will know it except me. But if I have to be accountable to somebody else, to, to actually be the productive person that I am and, and report to somebody. And it's not even just reporting. Like, I can literally go through a whole day and not touch base with anybody else there, except by going through Slack or you know checking in in the morning. I may not talk to anybody else. Nobody knows if I've actually done anything or not, but I will. And then I know that I have to be accountable to somebody else. So for me, freelancing didn't work. I think that is probably one of the biggest reasons it didn't work for me. Right. And I, I think the point of learning is interesting to that because uh, you know, certainly I agree that lifelong learning is yeah. absolutely essential. Okay. But doing it on your own schedule can be really difficult. I have the same problem too. It's like, oh, I'm going to learn Japanese. I'm going to learn how to play the guitar. It's like those are two things that I've done okay-ish okay, uh, because unless you actually have some sort of thing. And that's, I've had a discussion with uh, friends of mine and like, you know, what happens when all the information is free? Why do people go to college or university or anything like that? A lot of it is just that pure accountability. It's like, accountability. here's a schedule. Yeah. Here's a, a t this is a semester. This is, uh, you are I paid for this. For this. I, I need to go. This. Yeah. Uh, this is how you get a good grade. Yeah. And if you don't get a good grade, then you probably haven't learned it anyway. Yeah, but even if you don't have grades, like but, yeah. let's say the, um, the improv classes I've taken have been an excellent uh, educational experiences. Everyone's serious of being there. Everyone's there for three hours. It goes the entire time or longer. 
uh, and everyone's having a great time. There's no grade, but everyone's having a, a super wonderful right. time. Right. If you just said, "Hey, show up whenever," it would never happen. So, that's right. yeah. uh, if you are, yeah, if yeah. you are going down the freelance route, I think there are some things like billing or info, whatever you find the most challenging or obnoxious or silly thing that you don't want to do. That's the thing you probably have to schedule uh, and be mm -hmm. real about it and say, "Okay, yeah. Friday is billing day, even mm -hmm. though I hate it." And you'll hate Friday, mm -hmm. but it needs to be done. So, mm -hmm. all right. okay. Eleventh of the month is my billing day. Eleventh of the month. I have okay. to. It's a weird. It's so weird. It's because one of my 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 big clients they they pay on the on 15th. the fifteenth. Yeah. So if you get it, yeah, you have to get it in just before, and so I just so that I can get paid quick enough to. Um, but yeah. That so you is, make that for everyone. Yeah, actually, it, it, um, I was just saying it. Yeah, it depends. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. I think I'd rather take billing over the point of the time. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. That, I agree. So, <laughs> and it's funny, I was just thinking, I'm like, wait a minute, it's the last of the month. Guess who's got to send her invoice in tonight? Uh, it's but the beauty, yes, thank you. Uh, but, but the beauty is, again, when we're talking about billing, it's the same amount every month. That's it. That's all I do. Same amount, change the dates, we're good, done, and off it goes. Automate that. I'm probably going to automate it. But anyway, so I'm going to ask these guys one last question, and then uh, I'm going to open it up to the floor, and y'all can ask anything you, you want sort of thing. Um, but uh, so if there is one podcast, article, resource, whatever, uh, that, that you think uh, all these lovely people uh, need to read or or look at the faces on these guys, man. It's like I've asked them like the, the answer to the universe. Which you're right now. Forty-two. Exactly. Um, the is there like do you guys have one resource where you could go if you want to be a freelancer, if you want to do this, or even just learning in general? Where would you point them? Um, there was. I'm not sure if it's still around because I haven't listened to it in a while, there was a, a podcast that was put out by You Gurus, I think was the name of it. Mm. I think they've rebranded. Um, okay. I'll have to look that up and yeah, maybe I'll tweet it out. Um, but they they had a podcast that they talked about the web design and web development business. It was the business side of it. They didn't really talk about development, they didn't talk about PHP, JavaScript, all that stuff. It was the business side. And for someone who was the coder, that was invaluable for when I was a freelancer. Okay. All right, anything else? Uh, one video that I play in my class, and I'm going to not say the full title because it's got the F on Oh, yes, yes that, that one. one. That one. F you pay me. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, Mike Montero. F, F you pay me. Yeah, yes. and, uh, but I, I play in class anyway because it's yes. freaking good. Uh, because Mike? My, uh, my, Mike Montero. Mike Montero, yeah. that's it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. The, the book that he wrote on mm. that is excellent mm. as well. But uh, especially for uh, the students that I teach right now, uh, half of them are kind of interested in some production role that like would be an employee within a larger organization. Half of them are, are thinking about entrepreneurship, uh, coming up with their capstone projects that will involve creating their own business. And so that, I, I pointed to it on that one at the moment because it's like you have value, you are someone who needs to maximize your own value, yeah. uh, determine what that value is is a lot of what we talk about. Mm -hmm. is like really drilling in the value proposition. Uh, but if you don't monetize that, then you're sabotaging yourself. And it's difficult, and it's especially for people who are very kind and they want to help and everything like that, those are the people who end up getting, there are people out there who will totally suck up that energy and never pay you, never give you the respect you want. And the moment that you give mm -hmm. yourself so much of that, they will exploit that and your level of respect in their mind goes down. So you have to actually stand up for yourself sometimes and say, hey, you know what? I need to pay my money, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Run into people like that over over oh, the yeah. years. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure. It's yeah. just like it's like uh, I will. I'm trying to be nice here, but you know, you're asking me my profession. Why or why? Why am I not sending you a bill? And then and then I I've had on occasion I've sent bills to people with after like a a, a two hour long conversation and it's like and they're like shocked and it's like. Um, we you you booked an appointment with me. This <laughs> yeah. was not like you're not my 
friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. you're, like you're my you're my friend, but you're not. I'm not. I'm not gonna just give you my my profession for free. That's that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And maybe that and that's a, that goes with like a, in, if you're in the freelancing, if you're doing, you gotta you gotta be you gotta be you gotta know. Um, not like you're you're running a business. You're not you're not running a charity, right? Like you're you are. Sorry, that was that that particular phrase was. I, I will credit my brother on that one because uh, he was my business partner um, like 12 years ago, um, and that he used to say that we're running a business, not a charity. We're not giving away things to people. Uh, mm -hmm. um, that sounds harsh, but it, it, it's, it, it it's was. Accurate. It's straight. It's straight up though. You mm -hmm. got it. You got it. Like. It is your business. If you take two hours to and not not make that billable, then mm -hmm. you have just lost two hours of billable time mm -hmm. you could have been using on a client that is that will that respects your, your right. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything from the audience? Yeah. Good question. I'm a, over here. I'm a consultant, independent consultant, and I've got clients which run multi years right for what I do. But when it comes up to getting people, there seems to be an aggression or a dislike of somebody being called a freelancer to a consultant. So how do you differentiate? Because they're basically doing the same job. And the consultant is working with a client independently. A freelancer is working with a client independently. But how do you get beyond that? I'm a consultant versus freelancer. I've got a client at the moment, a Canadian client, that refuses to have freelancers that will take consultants and then complain about the cost of a consultant over a freelancer. <laughs> I feel like that's just marketing. Like that's like you're, you call yourself whatever you call yourself. I mean, uh, definitions, look it up in the dictionary. I mean, I guess they're the, uh, Consultants tell you what to do, freelancers do. Exactly, that's, that's what I've always thought. That's yeah. Consultants tell you what you should do, freelancers should do that. That's the difference. A freelancer well, actually necessarily. Do consultants and should just by, by definition. Usually, so for Not example, yeah. I mean, I uh, one of the th one of the courses that I took as part of my degree was literally a course in consulting. It was a final year course, and you know what the consultant will do? They'll ask you for your watch and tell you what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> that and and this is a professor who used to work for McKinsey, to, you know, Deloitte's like the biggest. Yeah you know, consulting company. So I think that, you know, I think you've hit on a bit of truth there. That may be not what you think, but that may be the perception from the people you're working with, your clients. They may say, look, we're going to hire consultants because we, we want them to tell us what we need to do rather than we need a freelancer to do it for us. That, that's a good question to ask them. Why won't you hire freelancers? <laughs> Why are you going to hire consultants or whatever? There is a certain level of, and, and believe me, at Codable, we've had tons of people who have said, we do not want an individual to work on this project. We need a team. Right. Not just because of the, of the volume of the project itself, but because they want to make sure that there's going to be no interruption. Right? So if somebody falls sick, if it's an individual, what happens? Right? But if there's a team of people, then that can be worked on simultaneously, or that can be done, or that can be done. Someone else can fill in. Right Now in Codable, we don't have any teams larger than six. But at very least, we've had clients that have come on there and say, I do not want to work with an individual. I want to work with a team. So that may be part of, part of the problem, is what they are defining in their own heads. It also, depending on the state you're in, could also determine whether you charge sales tax or not. So, like, if you're doing yeah. development work, you yeah. charge sales tax. If you're doing consulting for it, you don't charge sales tax. Unless the consulting leads to billable, it, then it, you have it, to it, charge sales yeah, tax for the consulting. It's it's very hard. Go into the argument whether it's capex or opex or anything else. Mm. 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 Right. Yeah. It's a bunch of Canadians sitting here. Yeah. Basically, yeah. we charge yeah. we charge sales tax. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. No. Um, yeah. So I've been doing this stuff for about thirty years now. Yes. And I have some very specific definitions for freelancer. And freelancing is what I do on the side when I have a job. Freelancing is what I do between jobs. And it's not very professional in for like I don't treat it very professionally. It's odd jobs. It's picking up side gigs. It's stuff. 
right now, uh, I lost my job several months ago, and I'm in pretty much probably going to just go on my own long term. And so I'm not going to freelance. I'm starting a business, and I'm going to be self-employed, and I'm making an LLC, and I'm going to form relationships with people who can do things when I'm sick and people who do skills that I don't do, and I'm getting an accountant, and I'm getting a business manager because I hate that stuff. And that's stuff I would not do if I were just freelancing and messing around and picking up some cash on the weekend. I think a lot of this has to do with what people think the word freelancing. Right. Well, and that's I mean, what a lot of this is exactly, exactly why I'm having this because, sorry to interrupt, because that was that was sort of the thing about this is that, you know, everybody's like, well, why don't you just freelance? And, like, that was the normal thing to do for a web development sort of thing. And I'm like, but I don't like it. Yeah. But freelance, Not just freelancing, but, but going on my own, period. Freelance yeah. has a kind of a connotation in yes, American English of, like, loosey-goosey, that's you know, right. well, working right. out of your that's kitchen. Right. That's, that's right. how I treated it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. But, I mean, I've been a freelancer for over 40 years in two different businesses. But it's always been a business. People say, what do you do? Well, I was a photojournalist. Are you a freelancer? Well, I suppose I am. But nobody says, gee, I think I'll hire a freelancer. Same right. thing with web development. What do you do? I'm a web designer. Oh, you have a business? Well, of course I have a business. Oh, nobody ever asked me if I work with anybody else. Yeah. If you ask my client, is he a freelancer? They'll shrug their shoulders. They don't use that word. It's a business that they contract with mm -hmm. to do their work. But I think the key to all of this, as you've all been saying, yeah. is up here. It's a, menta yeah. it's it's a, mentality, a mentality which drives yeah. Yeah. everything. Yeah. And yeah. I've taught in college, and I told my students, if you don't want to be a photojournalist, why are you in this class? If you don't want to do it, you don't want to do the work and the research and the schlepping the equipment, yeah. why are you here? Yeah. It's not just a thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's if you're relying on yourself, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. if you're relying on yourself, mm -hmm. that's the key to whatever freelancing. Right. Because right. there isn't anyone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. if you don't want to do that, mm -hmm. and you don't have the brain that wants to do that, that's a completely different issue. Correct. What your clients think of you is whatever you project. That's right. You know, if you project someone who works at, well, everybody works out of the kitchen, I, I don't, but if you project, you know, I, I live out of my car and I, you know, I'm a great coder and I do websites because I'm a genius, people will think of you as whatever that means. Right. And the joke I used to have mm -hmm. is people would call me up and say, well, we're a nonprofit and we need you to come and shoot our annual report. And I said, well, that's very flattering. Thank you. And they say, well, we need you to give us a break on the price. And I would say, well, I'm sorry. Do you pay your accountant? And they said, yes. And they said, do you pay your uh, cleaning service? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. You paying the designer who's designing yeah. the report? Yeah. And I said, well, they would say, do this job for us at a 80% discount. And then the next time, yeah, when we have a project, we'll come to you. What was that? Let, let me, um, let, let, let me oh, give you the kicker. You're going to do it for the exposure. Yes. Sure. Let me give you the kicker. Yeah. I had a big corporate account. Yeah. And I worked mm -hmm. for them until the company fell apart. They were wonderful. Mm -hmm. I had all their security clearances. And I once asked the art director, you know, when you think of me, what do you think about? And he said, oh, about $1,500 a day. I said, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> this was back when a That's dollar it. was a yeah, dollar. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's because so, you are, as a freelancer, whatever you project to people, mm -hmm. and that's your job, because mm -hmm. oh, that's, that's how they're going to get yeah. If they're going to hire you personally, mm -hmm. instead of, you know, the ad agency mm -hmm. with 15 people who get around to fixing their well, website when the cows come home, it's a totally different proposition in the way clients think the, about you. But the, the whole, like the whole reason I came up with this, is, you know, regardless of whether I call it a consultant, whether I call it a freelancer, or whatever the thing is, it was the idea of as a web development person, right? That you know, whether you own your own business or whether you call yourself a consultant, etc., is that it takes a certain type of person. Exactly. And that's what this was all about, right? Is that I came to the realization. Everybody's like, well, you're a web developer. Of course, you're going to freelance or you're going to do your own business. Whether you call it freelancing, you, I, don't, I don't care what you call it, but you're going to run your own business, right? And I'm like, are you kidding me? Right? And I'll tell you, I was in business with my own father for five years when he ran his own business. 
And he's like, oh yeah, you know, when, when I, you know, pass on to the next life or whatever the heck it is, he's saying, dude. You know, when I pass on to the next life, you know, you're going to inherit the business. And I go, yeah, Dad, and I'm going to shut it down. <laughs> he goes, what do you mean? I go, because, Dad, you are the business, right? It was a real estate consulting firm, and he had a very specific, very, very specialized set of skills. There were very few people who had been the city property commissioner, who had the building code, who was a civil engineer, and could figure out all of this other stuff. There were literally two people in the city that could be an expert witness on that topic that he could do. And he said the only reason that the other guy paid, got paid a little bit more, he was a better witness. <laughs> right? But I told him, I said, I cannot be you. Yeah. So as soon as this thing shuts down, I said, I don't want to run my own business. I knew that when I was 21 years old. So why the heck did I decide to do it two years ago in, or three years ago when COVID hit? Because I didn't have a choice. At least I didn't think I did. Right? It took a little bit longer, but and, and so therein lies sort of where, where this the whole talk came from. It's like I was so geared up. I was going to you know start my own business, and then I went, why am I doing this again? <laughs> or why, why am I doing this in the first place kind of idea, right? And so, I think it's a good idea to just to practice it once to see if it is yeah. it's worth it. And if it's yeah. your, yeah, then that's exactly why I brought this thing together. So, um, you never know until you try. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I, I know we've gone a bit over. Is there any other qu quick questions maybe? No? Yeah. I'm curious one, but for those of you who have looked at both experiences of freelancing full-time versus having a full-time job but freelancing on the side, do you find that that takes some of the pressure off? Or is it more like, I don't want this distraction? For me, both. Okay. I've uh, sorry for, for the benefit of the the recording because oh, yeah, you sorry. may not reach it. Um, so the question was: Is uh, you know do you do freelancing as part like a side gig, uh, as it were, like what we've just been talking about, or you know do you do like sort of freelancing full time, uh, or do you do it as side gig? Yeah. yeah go ahead. So for me, both. Um, when I wasn't a full time web developer, I had another job and I started into web development. I would do that on the side. But now, as someone who does web development full time and sometimes has to do overtime, I don't want to do it after work. <laughs> and I think I would be doing a disservice to my clients mm -hmm. having that mentality. I, I have the same thing. I do that with my with 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 my job and with my my freelancing. Or whatever you want to call it now that now that we've had that your company discussion, but <laughs> your company that, it is it is like I my business hours are from nine to five like that's when I work that's I'll be at my desk I talk to my clients from those times and and most of the time after that like I'm, I I want to have I want to have a life after that and if I had a full time job um, and I had one what was it, six years ago or something I, I spent a little time with ten up. Um, and uh, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna work all day and, and do this and then do like have clients a few hours in the evening or something like yeah. that. Well, just that's yeah. just a lot of. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, if you're psychic, you're psychic, probably something totally different. Then it'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. then it'd be more yeah. of a hobby or, yeah. or you know something yeah. like that. I think if you're, uh, I think if you were looking at sort of changing jobs, then you might consider it. Yeah. Right, but then would I, I maybe if one way to do it, and this is the only time I think we even told our own students that you do work for free, right? It's not necessarily for the exposure, but for the learning, yeah. right? So if you are looking at shifting into a different job and you want to learn, you might do your full time job and then you know help a friend. I wouldn't even help a friend, help a charity, yeah. okay? Yeah. Help a nonprofit who can't afford. You know, to, to do whatever and and start from there. That would be my advice. Yeah. Somebody who can really project. use the help. Okay. I you know? I do I did React projects on, like when I was learning React was was that was the that was how I did it. I was basically like mm -hmm. I was doing it on my own time um, mm -hmm. and just building my own mm -hmm. stuff. Like it, yeah. you know, sell your sell yourself to your fun. Yeah. That's the other part. Yeah. Yeah. Build something, also, something for fun. I would like what Kira does. I would call Kira an independent contractor, not free. Yeah. But freelancer like, yeah. to me seems a little more not mm. so structured. Mm. What you're doing is a structured business, but you're in the contract. Yeah. 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 So and, 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 and I'll hire a ton of contractors. Right. right. But right. they don't call themselves freelancers. So that's, that's true. Yeah. Did you have a quick question? I do. 
mostly for Matt. It's kind of a selfish question. Uh oh. <laughs> I, but it, here comes like, the heckling. It's, yeah. Well, so it's what I'm point. curious about. Like, how did you find the difference? Like, having done independent contracting and working for like a structured company, like the difference between working directly with clients versus working with clients through a project manager, right? Yeah. Like that buff. You have that buff buffer. There. Yeah. So do. You, Basically, as a freelancer, you do everything. Yes. And it's you know it's everything, everywhere, all at once. Sorry to <laughs> use that <laughs> move, but um, it's it's it it really is like you have to be in constant contact with them at all times, giving them status updates daily, if not every other day, sort of thing. Um, whereas with a project manager, I can I basically you. or a project coordinator. I can say, look, this is this is what I'm this is what I'm doing today, or what is there something that I need? To, has the client said anything? And I just get the quick, boom, boom, boom. Highlights. Here you go. Mm -hmm. And I would say, for me, that is much more helpful because mm -hmm. uh, then I can focus on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I just I wondered also like if that sense of community was beneficial, right? Because I know when. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So stay for my talk, which is right after this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, okay, so uh, thank you everyone yeah. for coming. Uh, I'd like to thank our panelists. Thank you very much. Um, it, it's, it's amazing what a few, you know, coffee crisp and a glass of wine or two will, uh, you know, drag some Canadians out. Why did you get any wine? Why no? Man. Can I say something real quick? Yes. Well, hey, hey, if you're looking, who do you think picked up the tab last night? Oh, that's true. Ah. If you're looking for an outlet, look up Give Camp and Do Action. There you have it. They are yes. strictly, narrowly defined ways for you to code for nonprofits and other people who would otherwise suck the life out of you, <laughs> but then let you cut that broad, cut that connection off, and they go their way, you go, their, you go your way. Can you repeat those for the, the crowd Give again? camp and do action. Do un action has an underscore between do and action. It's a WordPress thing. Give camp is not WordPress specific, but I've never done anything but WordPress at Give camp. <laughs> okay, there it is. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day. Cheers.